I am super excited to introduce Diana Alcindy. She is the founder of the Arabian Star Laser. She is also a manager of Jet Propulsion and other amazing things. She is also one of our education directors. And uh, we have come together with this love and passion uh, to really support the women in the Arabic speaking countries. And uh, so I'm so excited to have you here to share your story and inspiration. So thank you, Kim. I love when you call me a jet propulsion rocket scientist. <laughs> Friends do that. Um, but hi, everybody. I am so excited to be here with you from my home in California. I finally have sun. Um, Ramadan Karim, by the way, I know you're from all over. Um, uh, I'm now going to be using a, a PowerPoint. I'll just talk to you about my story, about the Arabian Stargazer, and things I believe in that is needed in the space sector and in, in STEM in general. Uh, I'm an Iraqi refugee. I moved to the US in 2008 after the war in Iraq. I was about 14 years old. We did, didn't speak English. My family did not have family in, uh, in the US, but this is where life took us. And fast forward to 15 years, years later, I'm currently designing and building rockets to explore the moon and beyond. And as as cool that may sound, I am basically a space plumber. This is what we do. I design and build tubing and valves and components and test them and integrate them into the rocket before they fly to space. I work at a company called Blue Origin. It's just basis company. We build multiple things like lunar landers, uh, rockets for space tourism and heavy launch vehicles to carry uh, satellites to space. My team is currently responsible for the propulsion system of the rocket uh, named New Glenn. I work on stage systems design, operations, and tests. And I graduated in 2017 with chemical engineering, which is not typically your average degree to work in the space industry. In 2018, I founded the Arabian Stargazer, which is a bilingual Instagram page that promotes STEM to Arab youth all around the world. And the page started kind of as an idea of an open door. What can I share from my experiences and give advice to students that don't necessarily have the same type of resources that I had when I moved to the US? So that page includes videos and pictures and riddles on why should I be an engineer and how does space exploration here help us here on earth? Because I aspire to engage the young Middle Eastern community, you, and expand the passion and access to science. We all saw how TikTok and Instagram and Reels and Snapchat became this new big thing that everyone has access to, even if you live in an isolated area, even if you live in, in a place where STEM is not available. So I call that science communication back then, and it's currently science education and communication where uh, we, we bring in resources and education to everyone's fingertip. And my ultimate goal, which Kim found interesting and wanted to help me with that, is to develop a student camp um, across the Middle East. It will be equipped with resources and materials and opportunities. And I'm so happy that we have so many people here on this call who are doing these things all across the world, like giving, giving access to zero-G flights to students. I would have wished to have something like that when I was, when I, when I was uh, that age. So I'm trying to break that dogma that kept education from girls limited and unequal. Girls around the world miss on all of these kinds of opportunities to acquire knowledge, to socialize and gain the necessary skills to develop that sense of autonomy and improve their personal well-being and their role in life. Uh, about a year ago, I gave a TEDx talk about science accessibility and the importance of diversity of languages in this field. And I won't bore you with, with a full talk, but the major takeaway was focused on collaboration. Our modern war problems are hard and they're only getting harder. And collaboration was crucial to find 
innovative and efficient solutions to these problems. And we all saw how COVID-19 played out, how climate change is severely impacted through ecosystems and communities and space exploration. We, we want to be multi-planetary species, but the major education is only taught in English. And that won't be possible to, to do all these things um, as humanity without collaboration and communication. So four years ago, when I founded the Arabian Stargazer, it was an educational platform. I saw that there was a need for communicating science in Arabic. People around me weren't excited about, about science or engineering. I was the only female in my community in the US that was an engineer which was mind boggling to me. Everyone was pharmacist, everyone loved medicine, which is kind of part of the Middle Eastern culture. Your parents tell you to do medicine. So I was curious to see if there were others doing the same science communication. So I searched YouTube and I wrote rockets and space exploration in Arabic. And the only thing that popped up, the only video that popped up was of a man reading a textbook in front of a crowd. And I thought, is this a way for us to excite others about science? Because I love science and I don't want to listen to this YouTube video. So how about people who are so disconnected from STEM, who are so disconnected from the importance of science and they don't have anything exciting or tangible to hold on to? So I saw that there was a need for science communication and inclusivity can be seen in many ways, such as language. And I, I don't know if there's a lot of Arabic speaking here in the audience, but rockets in Arabic is a frowned upon word to use. It is a frowned upon to mention the word rocket in Arabic, let alone, let alone want to build them, because rockets in Arabic mean death and destruction, whereas in English, it means hope and innovation. So every time I wanted to explain rocket science to my parents, imagine, I had to elaborate and say, peaceful rockets to explore space or peaceful missiles to explore space because it's automatically understood as missiles. So anytime people are talking in social media about what I do, Diana, American Iraqi engineer working on missiles, that's scary. You receive death threats after that. So unfortunately, since my field is male dominated, and it is not really accessible to a lot of people in my community, I felt the need to always have to explain myself more. I felt the need to speak louder, change the thickness of my voice, bring less of my personality to work. And I was even sometimes considered bubbly or called a princess at work. And even though I was a diverse candidate in my workspace, I wasn't working in an inclusive environment. And now years later, I am a manager of a highly technical team in a leading company for space exploration. And sometimes I wonder if I brought my full self to work, will I be here? Will I be here where I am today? So if there is one thing you can take away from all these different points that I talked about is don't be afraid to ask questions. Don't be afraid to raise your hand, to sit on the table. Don't sit on the chair next to the table, sit on the table. You were meant to be here. You were meant to be part of this discussion. And it took me a long time. I've been working in the industry for seven years. And it took me a long time to realize that being authentic and being myself and being loud about the things I believe in is actually going to get you places. So I'm, I'm proud of all this different organization. It, it shows how everybody cares about accessibility and inclusivity uh, because ex inclusivity without accessibility doesn't go anywhere. So um, I'm hoping that the Arabian Stargazer kind of open up these doors for others to, to say that there is a young female who speaks Arabic, who has an accent, who works in STEM and works on rockets. And for many years, I was the only female in these, in, in these discussions and going to the desert at 3 a.m. to do stage testing on a rocket in the cold desert wasn't an easy thing to explain to my parents. But if we show ourselves as examples, then it will make it easier for more females in the future.